Hey there, Sano Peeps, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to go over how I do a spine ultrasound. So pretty much the spine protocol. All right, so the majority of these exams are done for sacral dimple. So I begin in the sacrum, in the intergluteal cleft, and try to get the end of the sacrum. This looks like the coccyx, but this is actually the fifth sacral element. The coccyx is usually here with a higher megahertz transducer. You, sh you should be able to see it. If they're newborns, it might not be ossified at all. It might just look like cartilage. And make sure there's no dermal sinus. So any tracks leading from the skin surface to the spine. Now, for starters, I began with a 9 megahertz transducer. You can see it's kind of grainy. I went with the 9 first, but then I switched over to the 15, and you can see it's much better. So this is the, the fifth sacral element here. Uh, you can see the skin. It's all intact. Usually around here, you would find the coccyx. The older babies, you'll see the coccyx a little better. So I begin here, and then I start working my way up sagittally. So sacrum sagittal. Take a few pictures. Try to get all the sacral elements pretty clear. And then I try to get the lumbal sacral region so here i already attempted a panoramic view you see it's not great you got some artifacts here but i'll go from the sacrum and then scan up if the baby moves too much i'll start from the top and work my way down again five four three two one this is l1 you see the lumbar vertebrae are usually pretty horizontal and then the first sacral element will start off at an angle here you can lower the megahertz i have it at 11 you can lower it down to 10 to see if you can see a little better or if you're having trouble, you could go back to the nine. So here's the lumbar sacral region. You can see the lumbar vertebrae. They're usually trapezoidal in shape. These are the intervertebral disc spaces. And here you see the conus medullaris right here and the cauda equina. So here I dropped it down to 10 from 11 to 10. You see how clear it is. You see the lumbar vertebrae pretty clearly, the conus medullaris. If you're having trouble getting a panoramic view due to movement you could also do a dual screen and you can see with the dual screen it almost looks like a like a good panoramic you see the conus you see the lumbar vertebrae the sacral vertebrae and then you can do your counting so five four three two one five four three two one the conus medullaris ends at the end of l1 which is normal anything beyond l2 especially anything beyond l3 is considered low lying and can be tethered cord all right so here's another panoramic attempt much cleaner again you kind of see a little line here but that's that's fine this is actually a pretty good one and here's another attempt at a panoramic you see i'm have some gel drop out here but you know you take what you can get so here's five four three two one five four three two one so again conus medullaris ends at the end of l1 which is normal here you can see the central canal of the spinal cord and then here's with labeling so sacral lumbar and then this is t12 so thoracic vertebrae 12. so then i begin transverse in the lumbar region you can go back down to the sacrum and work your way up but i'm already in the lumbar region so i begin sacral uh i begin transverse there you can see the spinal cord in transverse very clearly you see the central canal this is good to look at too because you can have dilation of this which is referred to as hydromyelia at the very end of the the spinal cord where it starts to taper into the conus medullaris you can have a small dilatation in that area that's uh termed ventriculus terminalis and i like this transverse view because you can see everything you can see the spinal canal the sp uh, the cerebral spinal fluid this is the vertebral body here this is lung lung uh, muscles here you can see the spinous process the lamina and the transverse process of the spine so I'll go a little lower you can already see the tapering down to the conus and then here I'd like to do a clip to show the movement of the spine. You see all the nerve roots moving. That's one way to show uh, spine movement. You also you want to show the spine movement because in tethered cord, the spine is very tight and it does not move. So another way to do it is with M mode. So here you put find any nerve root or any structure that's you can see visibly moving within the spinal canal, and then put N mode. You can see the little undulations there and here's another one you can see the waves of movement all right so then i start going down to the sacrum here you can see the last sacral element so here you can see there's no dermal sinus tracts or defect within the skin you can see the glute muscles right here all right and then i just try to take some more images of the conus medullaris and the cauda equina phylum ter terminale region make sure everything is in order you see this little structure here. This might be a phylar cyst, which is 
we see it quite oftenly. It's usually not a big deal. Another M mode. And then lastly, I like to count from the ribs, count to the last rib, which would be T12, and then angle to midline to see the conus medullaris to make sure that <clears throat> the conus medullaris ends at L1 as the same as from counting from the sacrum up. Just to double check that the conus medullaris is ending at the right spot. So here you go, T12, L1, L2. I don't know why that one's over here. That should be here. I think it's from the dual screen. When you want to switch from dual screen to solid screen, the, the letters moved over. But yeah, T12, L1, L2. All right, thanks for tuning in. I hope you found that useful. Take care. Bye.